Good morning and welcome to First Christian Church, whether you're here in the sanctuary or joining us online this morning or sometime this week. This is a community of God's love and hospitality. No matter who you are, no matter what brings you to the service this morning, we're glad you're here and we deeply believe God loves you. A few words about our service before we move deeper into worship. In a few moments, we will offer prayers from this congregation. There are multiple ways to share your prayers. There are green prayer cards located near the entrance. You're also more than welcome to share them on Facebook Live or find one of the leaders after worship and share your prayers with us. And another word about Facebook Live, if you're joining us on Facebook Live, whether that's in the sanctuary or somewhere around the world, let us know where you're joining us from. It reminds us that God's love unites us even though miles might separate us. Also this morning, the youth are gathering with Do Reverend Dr. Misan Choi in the youth room, and Nellie is meeting with our children under a hybrid model in the children's ministry room. If you want any information about those programs, reach, us, reach out to us after worship, and we'll get you the relevant information. Also, we will come to that time in which we gather at the welcome table. We have all-in-one communion cups near the entryway. Make sure to grab your all-in-one communion cup and if you're joining us online, use whatever elements are meaningful to you and know that however you celebrate communion, whatever you believe about this table, you are welcome in this space. Now, as we move deeper into worship, let us return to that reminder that this is a community of God's love and hospitality. No matter how you pray, no matter what brings you to this service, whatever's happened this past week, know that you are welcome and safe in this space. Now. In that spirit of welcome, let us stand as we are able and join together in song.
that reminder to walk in love, we walk into a space of prayer. And as I said earlier in the service, if you have a prayer you'd like to share, there are green prayer cards. Use Facebook Live or find one of us after worship. Also, we have two places to light candles for the prayers that you might have in your life. You can do that during this time of prayer, during a song, or after worship. But know that however you light a candle or however you pray, we believe that God hears you and hold that prayer in love. And so as I share the prayers from this community of faith, I will, at the end of that prayer, I will use the phrase, God, in your mercy. I invite you to respond with the simple phrase, hear our prayer. And so we begin, as we do every week, by giving thanks for this community of faith and our partners in ministry, such as Home Again LA, Burbank Temporary Aid Center, Homemade Thursdays, Project Mercy, Week of Compassion, Green Chalice, and so many others. 
let us give thanks for those ministries. God, in your mercy. And as we gather this morning, we are all too aware of the earthquake that struck Turkey and Syria recently. And the numbers this morning indicate that over 33,000 have perished due to that earthquake. So we hold those people in prayer and those responders and development workers that will not only be on the front lines today, tomorrow, but years to come, rebuilding communities and offering hope. Let us pray. God, in your mercy. Sarah Northrup also requests prayers for her friend Lachlan, who is recovering from a gender-affirming surgery. Let us hold that friend in prayer. God, in your mercy. Lowell requests prayers for his sister, who is admitted to the ICU in Palmdale and struggling with COVID pneumonia. God, in your mercy. I thought I was over this cough, and it lingers. <clears throat> so let us give thanks for water and all of creation. God, in your mercy. Your <clears throat> and these prayers might be short again this week. Um, recently, we received word that Central Christian Church in Glendale is struggling with their future after they lost access to their building, so let us keep that community of faith in prayer. God, in your mercy. <clears throat> we also pray for those today who live in assisted living facilities and those who seek to care for them, such as Janet, Audrey, Ken, Na, and so many others. God, in your mercy. We also keep in prayer those who experience homelessness and those who seek to stand with them and support them. God, in your mercy. And we continue to pray for Liz Zambrano and her family as she is in recovery and seeks love and care. God, in your mercy. Let us continue this time of prayer in reflection and song. <laughs> stare should your life attract or scare let me answer prayer in you and you in me will you let the blinded see if I but call your name will you set the prisoner free admit to what I mean in you and you in me. Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around Through my sight and touch and sound In you and you and me Lord, you 
summons echoes true when I but call your name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. And I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. And I'll move and live and grow in you and me. I invite you to join me in a time of prayer. God of the strange and peculiar. We that gather this morning come coming from a myriad of realities. Some of us are deeply bothered by the things we see on the news. Some of us give thanks for family and friends. Some struggle with doubts. Some are eager to walk into this sanctuary and embrace friends. Still others are timid because of the history of church. Regardless of how we enter this space, we give thanks for the ways in which you embrace and love each and every one of us. For God, you have heard our prayers this morning, prayers that indeed rise up from the particular realities of our own lives. We simply ask that you surround those prayers with that same love, mystery, and grace. And as we offer the prayers this morning, we turn to the ancient words of St. Francis of Assisi and simply ask again, where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. And we ask all of these prayers in the mystery of your sacred name. Amen. Our scripture today is from Luke chapter 5, verses 12 to 26. Once, when he was in one of the cities, a man covered with a skin disease was there. When he saw Jesus, he bowed with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said, I am willing, be made clean. Immediately the skin disease left him, and he ordered him to tell no one, but go, show yourself to the priests, and as Moses commanded, make an offering for your cleansing as a testimony to them. But now more than ever, the word about Jesus spread abroad. Many crowds were gathering to hear him and to be cured of their diseases. Meanwhile, he would slip away to deserted places and pray. One day, while he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem were sitting nearby. And the power of the Lord was with him to heal. Just then, some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a stretcher. They were trying to bring him in and lay him before Jesus, but finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him down on a stretcher through the tiles into the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. When he saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. Then the scribes and the Pharisees began to question who is this who is speaking blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus perceived their questionings, he answered them, Why do you raise such questions in your heart? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven you, or to say, stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the one who was paralyzed, I say to you, stand up, take your stretcher, and go to your home. Immediately, he stood up before them, took what he had been lying on, and went to his home glorifying God. Amazement seized all of them, 
And they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. I invite you to join me in a time of prayer. God of the strange and the peculiar, open us this day to the power of an ancient story and the ways in which you move in peculiar ways. In your name we pray, amen. Healings, a man being dropped through a roof, deserted places, The story this morning is full of strange things. Now, there is a movement to simply look at stories like this and to do a traditional reading. Jesus heals, Jesus makes whole, move on. I remember once sitting in a youth group in which a a high school student began to ask questions about these healing stories, asking, why did Jesus do that? Why don't we have healings like this today? And asking the myriad of questions that arise in a postmodern mind when we read stories like this and trying to make sense of them. And in that particular youth group, the youth minister said, Jesus heals. Take it at that. Move on. But when I hear responses like that, I turn to one of my favorite TV shows, Stranger Things, and a favorite line from that show and the character, Dustin. He, in a particular scene, he calls his science teacher to get information on a particular experiment, which isn't important this morning, but I encourage you to watch that show. And that's when a line pops up to me from time to time, and it is one of my favorite lines. And it goes something like this. When his teacher tries to shut him down, he says, why are you keeping this curiosity door locked? Do you know that line from that show? Why are you keeping this curiosity door locked? And I believe that's what we do. When we turn to stories like this, if we simply say, Jesus heals, move on, we're keeping a curiosity door locked. Because the truth is, biblical scholars will say these stories are never just that, simply about healing and Jesus healing. But rather, biblical scholars will invite us to look at the strange and peculiar things of these stories and to begin to dig through the layers for the deeper meaning because these stories are rarely simply about healing but rather they are about inclusion, justice, marginalization. And to get to those layers, we have to dig a bit deeper. And so we must start at the end of this story to get to those peculiar things, those stranger things. That line that Sarah so wonderfully read, that last verse, in which they remark that strange things happened that day. You see, if you look at the original Greek, it's hard to translate that word strange, for it can be translated in multiple ways. Another way to translate that word strange is remarkable. Another way still is wonderful. Another way still is surprising. The truth is, if we start with that verse, we're invited to take seriously the strange, wonderful and remarkable things that are happening in this story. Two remarkable healings. One, leprosy. Another, something has gone wrong with that man's body. So let us dig into this healing story and ask ourselves, what's happening? Why? And then reach into this ancient story and put it in to our postmodern context. You see, as biblical scholars John Dominic Cross and Paula Fredrickson and others will say, these healing stories really aren't about just healing, 
but their a radical understanding of inclusion and those who stand on the margins in the first century. And so first we stop at the story of a leper. Now, people will remind us that we don't fully understand what the ancient people were talking about with leprosy. But what we do understand is this person was pushed to the edges of their society, so much so that even if somebody were to touch, touch that person, the other person was rendered unclean. Jewish scholars will remind us that there's nothing in Jewish literature that would suggest that that is a possibility. Jewish law actually doesn't say that touching another person who is unclean inherently makes you unclean. But rather, it was the larger society that dictated that. This does not come from Jewish law. Let me say that again. What could be deeply embedded in this text is a scary form of anti-Semitism. Rather, we need to broaden our perspective and understand that that notion of unclean came from the wider culture, not the religiosity of the day. And so what we understand, not only was this person ostracized by his own community, but the wider culture as well. And so not only did he need to be, quote unquote, healed, he needed to be touched to be included, to be embraced. And that's what happens in this strange, remarkable, and wonderful story. As if we move beyond the healing and dig into the narrative, we find out that this man probably had not been touched, not only for minutes, hours, days, weeks, but possibly years. He had been without embrace, without inclusion. And then in a turn of this story, Jesus does the simple thing and simply reaches out and touches him. And with that touch, tells the story of radical inclusion and embrace. That, my friends, is the strange thing about the story this day is that this man, who had once been not only held at arm's length, but not even touched, had been suddenly included. And so that is where we get to the heart of these stories, is that these stories, in their essence, are about the call to embrace, include, listen, heal, and touch those who society dares not. At the heart of this story is that radical message of inclusion and embrace. Stranger things, not only in the first century, but in our lives today. My guess is we can take this story from its first century context and the biblical scholars that would allow us or encourage us to sift through the layers. And we can place it in our context today and begin to imagine those who are held at arm's length, those who walk through our world untouched, those who walk through our communities on the edges because society tells us that they are untouchable, that they are unembraceable, that because of who they are or how they identify or what the world has placed upon them, that they should not be included. One of, this thi one of the things this community does on a regular basis is what we call a new members lunch or a new members gathering. Those who are new to this community often get invited to that lunch and they get to sit down and learn about the peculiar things of this community. They get to meet long time or new members. And at one of these gatherings, I remember sitting in one of our members' backyards and one of 
our members describe this community, and I'm just going to summarize what they said in terms of what I heard, not necessarily what they said. They described our community as an island of misfit toys, of stranger things. And one member was eager to jump up and say, oh no, our community is not that way. But as we began to tell the stories of this community and this space, it became abundantly clear that this community is growing into that identity and should not be ashamed to call itself an island of misfit toys. Because the truth is our world is full of people and families that don't fit in. Our world is full of people who are misfit toys, untouchable and unembraceable. But we are called to construct a community of stranger things, of misfit toys. And if we take these two healing stories seriously, that is what we are called to be about in this world. That is what this community is called to be and to live into. So if you walk into this space this morning feeling a little bit out of sorts, a little bit strange, a little bit misfit, you have found a home. You have found a place in which you will be embraced, a place in which we believe God deeply loves you. So let us unlock that door of curiosity and strange and let God's love enter in. Embrace the untouchable. Love the unlovable. Welcome in the misfit toys. Let us take this story this day seriously and unlock the possibility that we might be a little strange. Thanks be to God for the misfits, the strange, and the peculiar. Thanks be to God. Amen. There are many strange and unique places to find God, some of them expected and then other ones unexpected, or unexpected people even, for that matter. The communion table is one of those expected places. Come to this table for communion knowing that this is a place of openness, remembrance, and embrace um, of, of your, uh, of anything that's, you know, if you feel misfit, you are embraced here. You are welcomed here. It's a place of reflection and a place of peace. So no matter where you are on your faith journey, whether you're at the beginning, the middle, or somewhere in between, you're always welcome here. And let us go into communion with that remembrance and mindset. Thank you, Todd, for that reminder. That no matter what you believe about this meal, what brings you to this time, you are welcome here. So in a few moments, I will share the words of institution, and then together we will take the bread. Sarah will lead us in the Lord's Prayer, and then we will take the cup. But now is the opportune time to peel back that plastic layer and take the bread and set it aside and to prepare your communion. So we again share that ancient story that when Jesus was gathered with those disciples, he took bread, broke it, and turned to them saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in a similar way, he took the cup and after giving thanks, poured it out, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant given for you and for all. Each time you do this, 
Do this in memory of me. Let us take the bread together. Our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We've now come to that point in our service in which I share the announcements from this congregation. I'm not going to be nearly as funny as Andy or as joyful as Todd, but let me run through a few things that are happening in this community of faith um, before we stand and join together in song. First, our wonderful FCCB outcasts had a wonderful game last week, but due to the Super Bowl, we will not be playing today, so pass that word around. But I do encourage you next Sunday... We will put out the information about the game. If you want to come see a wonderful and joy-filled team play on the field, please join us. We've now hit that time in which we can't accept any new players, but you can certainly come and watch us. And believe you me, it is very entertaining. Also, our weekly groups will continue this week. Uh, the weekly reflection group Thursdays at 5 p.m. We have a study that meets on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. And we're starting a new reading by Howard Thurman, who wrote Jesus and the Disinherited. If you would like to join that group now, this is an opportune time to jump in. The readings are available out in the sanctuary, and we gather on Zoom. It's a great group with great conversation. Howard Thurman is a well-known African-American author, and um, words are worth taking seriously. So if you're interested in that group, let me know, and I'll include you on in the email list. Also, Homemade Thursdays continues to utilize our kitchen on Thursdays to cook prepare and then deliver food to the encampments in, in the area. Um, we also have our monthly activities including uh, continuing. Blake has informed me that the Queer Club is meeting after worship this Sunday, so if you're interested in that group, see Blake after worship. If you're unable to make it this Sunday but are interested in that, let, let us know. Also, Burbank, we pack lunches for Burbank Temporary Aid Center on the first Saturday of every month. Our hiking group continues to meet on the third Saturday of every month which is this coming Saturday. If you want more information about that, please see me after worship. Also, we are still looking for nursery volunteers. If you're interested in that ministry or that opportunity, see me after worship. Um, and then finally, Misan continues to recruit youth for an exciting youth event that's happening this coming weekend. If you want more information about that exciting opportunity, see Misan. She'll be out um, in the entryway after worship and can get you the relevant information. Now, for any guests or visitors who have joined us this morning, we have coffee and conversation after worship. Please join us for those wonderful treats, snacks, and drinks. Um, and for those of you who are members or part of this community, we're always looking for more volunteers to sign up for coffee and conversation. That sign-up sheet is out in the narthex. Now, with all that's going on, if you want more information about any of those opportunities, we have a weekly email that goes out midweek. Look for that. If you're not on that list, see me after worship, and I'll make sure to include you. Now, with all that's going on, I invite you to stand as you are able and join together in song. <laughs> In the eyes of the blind, there's no one like you, none like you. Into the darkness you shine, but out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you, none like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, 
God, go out in the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all persons. Honor all creation. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the love of God, the light of Christ, and the power and communion of that Spirit be with each and every one of us. Let us go in peace. Amen. Thank you. 